My phone rang and again it was my mother. This was her fifth time calling me and asking about my arrival time. I was returning home by train. It was six o'clock in the evening and my train would reach the station at eight o'clock. My office had given a one-month holiday and I was returning to my hometown to my mother. But this time my mother was so excited on my arrival. I found this really strange, but I thought that she might have missed me a lot. At eight, I finally departed from the station and went straight to my home. The door opened and behind it was my lovely mother. Oh my dear son, Finally you are back home, she said with tears in her eyes. I hugged her when I saw her emotional face. We went to the living room and there I sat on the sofa. I was tired of my long journey. Mom, please bring me a glass of water, I said. But she didn't bring it and sat beside me. At that time she gave me a weird smile. Your water is coming, she said still smiling. And then a beautiful young lady of around twenty-two years entered the room. She brought the glass of water and gave it to me. She was quite nervous and shy. I could feel that she was uncomfortable. I took the glass and said thank you to her. My mother's eyes shone when she saw her. Then she said, so Peter Neat Lucy, our new house helper. Oh, okay, welcome Lucy. I said to her smiling. Thank you, sir, she replied. Then suddenly my mother screamed, Oh, no, 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 don't call him sir. He has a nice name, Peter. Just call him Peter and I will be very happy. Yes, please call me Peter. I said again smiling. Then we went to the dining table and had our dinner. Lucy went to kitchen for some work. Then my mother whispered to me Lucy is going to stay with us. Poor girl lost her parents last week. And there was no one to look after her. Poor child didn't even have house to live in because they were living on rent. So I decided to help her in my way. I was already looking for a maid. Oh, my dear mother, you did the best. But you know her well, right? You know the youngsters nowadays. And having a complete stranger in our house. I? No, she is not a stranger. I know her family well, said my mother. After our conversation ended, I went to bed. The next morning I got dressed and went to the breakfast table. Lucy and my mom had prepared my favorite breakfast. My mother sat down with me. But Lucy was standing and she had shy face. Come Lucy, let's have the breakfast together, said my mother. Yes, join us Lucy, I added. She sat down beside me. Then I looked at her closely for the first time. She had blue eyes, just as mine. I really felt a bond with her. I was thinking about going to the market to buy some clothes for Lucy. Ah, but you know, Peter, I am really tired today. Can you go with Lucy? said my mother. Yes. I can go with Lucy. I said hesitantly. Oh, lovely, you both can spend time with each other, replied my mother very happily. I didn't understand that why my mother wanted me to spend time with Lucy. I suspected her intentions. Then we headed to the market. Lucy bought some dresses. Even I helped her to select the dresses. I noticed that we have a lot of similarities. Later, we went to a coffee shop. We talked a lot. She told about her life. 
I told her about my life. I felt really happy talking to her. At around 6 p.m. we reached back our house. I thought my mother would be angry with us. But instead she was so happy that spent time together. Even she suggested that I should take Lucy to park tomorrow. I was surprised. There was something in my mother's head. Then before having our dinner, I talked to my mother. Mom, can you please explain me what do you want? I have noticed that you are acting weird these days. Why do you want me spend time with Lucy? What is going on in your mind? I asked. I know Peter what you were thinking. But believe me, I really love Lucy and I don't want to treat her like a maid. I just want her to feel like she is a part of our family. Replied my mother. I didn't say anything after this. My mother clearly wanted to make Lucy a part of our family. And that was possible if she became my wife. Lucy prepared my favorite cake to thank me. After having it we went to the terrace. We had a really special time together. We laughed and talked. Then for a moment my eyes looked straight into her eyes. There was silence. She looked beautiful in the moonlight. I held her hand. Then she smiled at me. What a beautiful night it was. I went to bed but I couldn't sleep. I was just thinking of Lucy. I felt a special bond with her from the very first day. And now I knew that I was in love with Lucy. I needed to tell this to my mom and Lucy. My mother would be very happy because she wanted this. I decided that I would propose Lucy tomorrow night. Early the next morning I went to buy a ring for Lucy. I made some arrangements in the backyard. I decorated it with lights and flowers. My mother didn't know that I was going to propose Lucy. I thought I would tell her later. At night I took Lucy in the backyard. She was so happy to see arrangements I made for her. Then I bent down on my knees, took out the ring and proposed her. She was very happy and had tears in her eyes. Then she screamed yes, yes, yes. Hearing her voice, my mother came into the yard. She saw the ring in my hand and Lucy in front of her. I was just putting the ring into Lucy's finger and my mother shouted. What is all this? What are doing, Peter? I laughed and replied, I am going to marry Lucy, my first love. And this is what you wanted me to do. Believe me, mother, I am the happiest man today. What nonsense. You can't marry her. Are you both out of your senses? My mother shouted and then she fainted. I couldn't understand anything. Lucy and I quickly were totally shocked. I called the doctor immediately. After checkup, the doctor told that my mother had a panic attack. He suggested me that I should not give her any kind of stress. When my mother regained her consciousness, I went into her room. Lucy was very afraid, so she didn't come with me. Mom, are you feeling good now? I asked. Yes, my son, she replied. Then I asked her why she reacted that way. She was the one who wanted me and Lucy to get closer and now her reaction was very strange. Look, Peter I know that I asked you to be with Lucy. But I never wanted you to marry her. And I will never give you permission for that. Forget all your feelings for Lucy. Said my mother. No, 
not at all. I love Lucy with all my heart. She is my first love. And she too loves me. And you also liked her so much. Then why are you against it? Please mom understand me, I said. She didn't reply. She closed her eyes to sleep. Next day when I returned from the market, I saw some guests in the house. A young pretty woman and an aged lady were sitting with my mother. I greeted them and sat beside my mother. Then my mother said to me, Look, this is my friend's daughter, Alex. Isn't she beautiful? I have selected her as my daughter-in-law. What? I shouted. No. This can't happen. Then I turned towards those ladies and asked them to leave the house immediately. My mother was very angry at me for disrespecting the guests. How can you even think of marrying me with someone else? You know I love Lucy, I said. But I have already told you that you can't love Lucy, replied my mother. But why? Please give me a reason. Can't you see the pain in my eyes? I said, I cannot give you a reason now. It's not possible, my mother replied. You have to give me a reason or I will take Lucy and get married without you, I said angrily. My mother started to cry. Then she said, Peter, my son I love you so much. I cannot lose you. I don't want you to hate me. If you want to know the reason then wait for my death. I was so angry at that time that I said something very terrible. Then die, mom. I still regret saying that to my mother. After that day, I stopped talking to my mother. She was getting weaker day by day. She was always sick. Months passed by, and my mom married Lucy to someone else. I tried to stop the wedding. But after seeing the condition of my mother, Lucy just wanted to leave the house. So she got married. My mother used to cry every day. The doctor said that she had few days left. One day, I was returning to home. I saw few people outside my house. I was afraid. One man came forward and told me that my mother was dead. I rushed inside the house to see my mother. I felt as if I lost everything. It was the worst day of my life. One day after my mother's dead, I went into her room. I found a letter. It was written by my mother. I started to read it. Peter, I know you hate me. But I couldn't tell you the truth, because if you knew the truth you would hate me more. I didn't hate Lucy. In fact, I loved her. She was like my daughter. And I wanted you to treat her like a sister, not a lover. But it's time for you to know the truth. But I request you not to hate me after reading this letter. I was against your marriage with Lucy, because she is your real sister. You have a blood relation with her. I had adopted you from a very poor family. I am not your real mother. But believe me, I have loved you like my own baby. When Lucy's parents died, I decided to take Lucy with us. But it was a wrong decision. Whatever happened is my fault. I am sorry, my son. Please forgive your mother. Don't hate me. Because I will continue to love you even if I die. When I read this letter, I couldn't believe it. What do I do? What is my mistake? What's my mother's mistake? 
I couldn't think anything. Now I have no mother, no sister, and no lover. What should I do? Can anyone tell me?